Hi, I'm Tian Shu. This is my partner, Alberto. Our project is on bringing nerfs into augmented reality. All right, so first, what is a nerf? A nerf is a neural radiance field. It's a technique for rendering 3D objects using neural networks. Basically, the idea is that you take a whole bunch of images from an object, from all sort, an object or scene from all different directions. Then you train a neural network, in this case, a multi-layer perceptron, to predict the color and density at given points within the object. Then whenever you want to render this scene or object from a different view, you do ray tracing using this network to calculate the colors and densities as you go through. The problem with this is that it's very slow. Imagine you have, say, a couple megapixel image, which is pretty typical. For each of these pixels, you have to do ray tracing through the object, which means you have to sample the NERF network at a whole bunch of different points. So again, for this hypothetical few megapixel image, you'll have to run our NERF network hundreds of millions of times. As you can imagine, this is really slow. Even with powerful GPUs like, say, a V100, you'd be lucky to get seconds per frame. And with a lesser GPU, you'd easily be looking at minutes per frame. So how would we possibly render NERF in real, in real time? Recent work called Plen Octrees has enabled this real-time rendering. The idea is basically, instead of rendering the NERF directly, to first sort of distill the NERF into an octree, which is a tree representation of essentially a collection of voxels and then to render this in real time, which can in fact be done in the browser as you'll see in our demo later. For our project, we set up a training and rendering pipeline to well, first take in images of an object from all different directions, then estimate the poses of these images and remove the background, then to train a NERF to render these objects, extract a plenoc tree from these objects so we can render it, and then finally display it in an augmented reality renderer. So first off, our input data. Our input data consists of around 100 images from all different angles, which we've then removed the background from, as you can see on our poster here. Next, we perform a pre-processing step by using ColMap, which is a structure from motion pipeline, in order to estimate poses, so the relative locations of each of the, of the cameras when we took each of the images. And then we also remove the background so we can properly have transparency in our scene, which is done by just replacing it with white, which is what our pipeline interprets as transparent. Now we'll move on to the training. So the training basically, instead of predicting, as we said, the RGB color, we were predicting the spherical harmonic coefficients to enable this view dependence appearance. Uh, so in our experiments, we run 100K iterations in total, and it took between 12 and 40 and 12 and 24 hours on, t on two V100 machines, and using an average of uh, 120 images, each of 300 kilobytes of size. Uh, then we will move on to the extraction of the octree. tree. Uh, so basically this is a three-step process, the extraction, the optimization, and the compression. So the extraction will be sampling this spherical harmonics throughout this evenly spaced grid. Then the optimization is fine-tuning these voxel values based on the original input image. And then lastly would be the compression, which is basically a quantization of these spherical harmonics to be able to display them on the web browser. And then lastly would be the augmented reality renderer, which was basically browser-based and using JavaScript and WebAssembly. So what we're doing is the modified planetary web renderer computes the transparency by returning the cumulative density during the ray tracing. And the webcam, what it does, it just feeds it, the browser displaying behind the web renderer. And then this is only possible using the APRO tag, which is basically a fiducial marker that we use in, in this case for computer vision purposes. And as we can see here on this image, this April tag would be the sheet of paper that is helping with the localization and size of the object with the distance with respect to the, with the April tag. And we can now move on to the, to the demo. So yeah, our demo is running on my laptop here, which just has a normal i7, Intel i7, no discrete GPU. And as you can see here, it's running at a constant 60, stable 60 FPS, even when I do anything. So for a demo, we have a camera connect, a webcam connected, which is pointed at an April tag. And as I move the April tag around, our object will move around as well. And so this just shows how our Nerf object is being localized around our April tag. We can also turn. We can also turn our Nerf around to show that it's not just a still image.